Uh, hello. Thanks for hearing me. I'm a retired professor of chemistry. I live in Manhattan, New York. I've been studying this issue for 16 years. It resulted in this book. I will make sure you have a copy of this book available to you, written by three scientists. We've heard a lot about science today, but most of the science you've heard up to now has been junk science. <laughs> others, because I don't think that anybody used it against you. You will be amazed how many times people refer to our science. This is here, sir. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Please don't applaud, because it's usually not my time. Um, we heard four times that the Center of Disease Control endorsed fluoridation. The, the Center of Disease Control in this case is 30 people. It's the oral health division. They're all deadly trained. Their job is to promote fluoridation. They do not have the qualifications to make any judgments on safety. That applies to most of the people we've heard tonight. With all due respect, they are dentists, dentally trained. So when they use the word safe, they're out of order. They don't know about the safety to other tissues. Um, no government has the right to force medication on its people. That's pretty simple. You're here. Right to individuals have the right to inform consent to medication. A local government is doing to everyone what a doctor can do to no one. And who has responsibility for any harm caused? Now, you've heard a lot from Health Canada, Ontario Dental Association, etc. They are recommending to you to put fluoride in the water, but they don't accept any responsibility for that. If any harm occurs, you are going to be responsible, not them. Um, uh, you would have to have super confidence that swallowing fluoride actually reduces tooth decay. And you've heard already admissions that it works properly. And it causes no harm to anyone in the community, not the average person, but it causes harm to, to no one. That, you need a huge amount of confidence for that. Um, there's no control. Once you put fluoride in the water, you cannot control the dose that people get. We heard a lot of comparisons about one part per million and four parts per million. Absolute nonsense. Because that's not dose, that's concentration. Dose is dependent on how much water you drink. And there's no control over who gets this medicine. Ask any pharmacist if there's a medicine you can give to everyone. The very young, the very old, the very sick, people with poor kidney function. It's a nonsense. And this is why we've never, ever, ever used the water supply to deliver medicine. Only fluoride is the only one. It's no good to swallow fluoride. There's not one single process in the body, one biochemical process that needs fluoride. Again, you've heard, if it works at all, it works publicly on the surface of the teeth. On the other hand, there are many biological processes, given sufficient dose, that uh, has been demonstrated that fluoride causes harm. There are many biological processes it's harm. This report here, which has again been referred to several times, the National Research Council report, despite what you've been told, chapter two in that study indicated that there are subsets of the American population that are exceeding safe reference doses, drinking fluoridated water at one part of the Um, I just said that. And remember, the bottle-fed babies in the fluoridated community get between 100 and 200 times more fluoride than breastfed babies. That's not essential. The Canadian health authorities are not doing their job on this issue. Uh, this is, okay. They have practically done no health studies in Canada whatsoever. They have done no monitoring of side effects. They are not doing any systematic monitoring of the levels of fluoride being reached in citizens' bones. One harm they don't deny is dental fluorosis. The proponents thought that only 10% of the kids would get dental fluorosis in, in its very mild form. Um, uh, now, we have, we have, according to the CDC, 41% of American kids between the ages of 12 and 15 had dental fluorosis. They're overexposed to fluoride. There is the, the graph, 41%. You notice they're not all very mild, it's mild. 
and moderate. Um, Canadian, the, the Canadian study that was referred to here didn't look at specifically foreign aid communities, they averaged the whole lot. It's a reckless assumption that when fluoride is damaging the growing tooth cells and causing dental fluorosis, it's not doing any other harm. The absence of study is not the same as the absence of harm. Instead of science, we're getting politics from Canadian dental and health authorities. Dr. Peter Cooney uh, said in Dryden, Ontario, I walked down your high street today and I didn't see anyone growing hormones. And you've been fluoridated for 40 years. One last sentence. You heard a lot about Health Canada. That Health Canada study is a shame. The six experts that were chosen that Dr. Peter Cooney talked about, and I think he selected them, four of them were dentists who were known to be pro-fluoridation. So you review the issue, the safety of this issue, and you give it to four dentists who are known to be pro-fluoridation. And they asked for public comment, and when I submitted comment, it was totally ignored. They only looked at five IQ studies. I pointed out there was another 18 studies, and when the final report came out, they still had not reviewed those 18 studies. Thank you very much.